Our company is one that's based on using technology and innovation to create new capabilities for our customers. I mean, I think engineering is very creative in its, in its core. You know, I'm not just studying something. I want to do something new and create something new. As engineers, I think 30% uh, of your job description is to worry. And then, and then, and then the balance of that uh, hopefully is filled with, with curiosity. The path hasn't been written, so we can have a crazy idea or, you know, something new that we want to try and, you know, we just go in the lab and try it. Getting people involved at a very fundamental level creates a very fertile soil from which these incredibly great ideas can be born. We're far thinkers, right? We go and do something and we think, well, how can we do it better? It's a blast. It, it's some of the coolest stuff. I think when you get good creative people together, I've yet to see a challenge that Boeing employees can't solve. The aircraft industry is facing great environmental challenges and every little thing we do helps. I have two boys. They drive by the factory. They go, Dad, is that your office? And I go, yep, that whole building is my office. I was a Navy pilot and then I was an astronaut. I mean, I used products that other people built. So here I was given the opportunity to put your fingerprint on the new spacecraft. Here at Boeing, you make history, you build the future. We're at the forefront of bringing this technology to a number of different applications that will make life on Earth better for everybody. The wing is nothing more than a giant sail. So this wing being so long creates more lift. This airplane loves to fly. We've taken the best minds and we've built something that I think will really help humanity. Today, somewhere in the world, the person who's going to be the first person to set foot on Mars is out there, probably studying math or science. I want to see the first launch. I'd be so excited to shake the astronaut's hand and tell him that I worked on SLS. I get kind of emotional about it. Our products touch so many aspects of life and to be able to um, have some kind of influence, however small. People have to want to do this as part of who they are. There's an obligation to learn something every day. When you're making the world better and you get to work on those things that you dreamed about working on when you were growing up as a kid, there's just no better job in the world. Welcome, my name is Sheila Richberg, College Program Coordinator for Career Communications Group. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Bad STEM Conference. This weekend, you will have the opportunity to interact with top professionals in the STEM fields and develop tools that you need to grow academically and professionally as you pursue your career goals. In a few moments, we will cover the following areas conference protocol, business attire and dress code, professional expectations, and making the most of the career fair. Conference protocols. Number one, conduct. Conduct is a crucial part of both your academic and professional career. So it is extremely important that you maintain an awareness of how you conduct and represent both yourselves and your institution. Rules of conduct are outlined in detail in your student conference guide. Number two, respect. Being courteous and respectful to all attendees is a mark 
of true professionalism and should be practiced at all times. Number three, identification. You will be provided with a conference badge. This badge is required for admittance to all conference events and must be worn at all times. Number four, timeliness. For all events and seminars, please arrive on time and be prepared to stay for the duration. Professional attire. Appropriate attire is a must. Often, before you're able to verbally make an introduction, your appearance has already done so for you. So to put yourself in the best position possible, take your dress seriously. For professional meetings, professional business attire or business casual is an acceptable style of dress. For the gala, black tie, or business attire is required. For everyone, avoid excessive colognes and perfumes. Maintain good hair grooming and personal hygiene. Maintain a professional and well-prepared appearance. Attending events. Making the most of the career fair. Resume basics. Here are some helpful tools that will help you to prepare your resume for success. Number one, basics. Use a professional email address. List degrees, graduation dates, and relevant projects or volunteer experience. Include your GPA only if it's a 3.0 or higher. Reference only professional social media sites. Appropriate length, one to two pages maximum. Do not include personal information. Exclude personal references. References upon request is an option. Number two, format. Sections should be clearly labeled. Use black ink and a consistent font size and style. Do not include pictures. Three, content and focus. Associate your accomplishments with the field of study or industry you are pursuing. List activities that emphasize your leadership skills. Bullet points focus on accomplishments as opposed to duties. Limit four to six bullet points per section. Number four, details. Note syntax or grammatical errors. Use focus words and strong verbs. No abbreviations, acronyms, or overly specialized language or industry jargon. No pronouns. Additional resources. If you would like additional resources or information, visit the following websites. to take to a career fair. Number one, do your homework. Number two, copies of your resume. Number three, a smile, a firm handshake, and a positive attitude. Number four, a 30 second sales pitch. Number five, bring your energy. Five things to take away from a career fair. Number one, business cards from the recruiters you have met. Number two, notes about the contacts you've made. Number three, information about the organizations. Number four, a better sense of your career options. And number five, self-confidence in interacting with employer representatives. Things not to do at a career fair. Don't cruise the booths with a group of friends. Don't carry your backpack or a large purse with you. Don't wing it with employers. Don't come during the last half hour of the event. 10 Steps to a Successful Interview Number 1. 
arrive on time. Number two, introduce yourself in a courteous manner. Number three, read company materials while you wait. Number four, have a firm handshake and make eye contact. Number five, listen. Number six, use positive body language to show interest and good posture. Number seven, smile and give nonverbal feedback to the interviewer. Number eight, ask about the next steps in the process before you leave the interview. Number nine, thank the interviewer. And number 10, write a thank you email to anyone you have spoken to. Thank you for watching. For additional information, please refer to Career Communications Group Student Conference Guide and be sure to follow us on Facebook. Again, my name is Sheila Richburg and I wish you a wonderful Bayer experience. We are the United States Army Materiel Command, the Army's Materiel Integrator. Our mission is to develop and deliver resources and expertise to achieve the Army's number one priority, readiness. For more than 50 years, Army Materiel Command has ensured our soldiers remain the best equipped fighting force in the world, providing every piece of equipment and all supplies our warfighters need to win on the battlefield. AMC synchronizes and integrates the collective might of the material enterprise to support Army global priorities and combatant commander's requirements. Logistic support and material readiness are the reasons the U.S. Army Material Command exists. To achieve our mission, AMC has an expansive and diverse portfolio of capabilities across nine major subordinate commands impacting every phase of the material life cycle. Army Sustainment Command is AMC's face to the field, bridging the national sustainment base to soldiers around the world. Army Contracting Command is the Army's principal buying agent, contracting for everything from food and clothing to bullets and bombs. AMC's Life Cycle Management Commands, Aviation and Missile Command, Communications Electronics Command, Joint Munitions Command, and Tank, Automotive and Armaments Command sustain and modernize the Army's equipment, providing essential training and support at the point of need. Military Surface Deployment and Distribution Command provides global movement and distribution of soldier equipment and supplies. Army Security Assistance Command manages training and foreign military sales for international partners, building their capacity and capability. And Army Research Development and Engineering Command develops groundbreaking innovative technologies to support soldiers today and provide solutions for the challenges of tomorrow. Army Materiel Command manages and operates the Army's organic industrial base, composed of 23 maintenance depots, manufacturing arsenals, and ammunition plants. When forces need equipment, parts, or ammunition manufactured, repaired, upgraded, or modernized, industrial artisans at the Army's OIB deliver. From contracting and manufacturing, supply and distribution, to sustainment and resale, from strengthening U.S. global partnerships, to maintaining and sustaining Army equipment and systems, Army Material Command ensures material readiness. Army Material Command is equipping warfighters at the speed necessary to sustain our current and future force, a force ready to face any adversary across all domains. We are modernizing and upgrading current platforms, investing in new capabilities, and addressing the Army's most critical equipment needs in order to maintain a decisive advantage. 
At Army Material Command, we are key enablers of Army power projection requirements, managing and operating transportation offices, mobilization stations, depots, arsenals, plants and ports to ensure that the equipment and supplies are available and can reach soldiers whenever and wherever they are needed. Manning the worldwide organization is a workforce of more than 61,000 dedicated military and civilian employees and another 60,000 contractors, many with highly developed specialties in weapons development, manufacturing and logistics. Army Materiel Command's ready and resilient workforce is at the core of the command's support to the warfighter, supporting our men and women in uniform. Army Materiel Command is focused on delivering strategic readiness, developing the future force, and supporting soldiers and the civilian workforce. By aligning with these Army priorities, we will fulfill our responsibility to ensure the U.S. Army remains the best equipped fighting force in the world. We are the United States Army Materiel Command. Hi, I'm Courtney. I'm the Talents Management Specialist with the Career Communications Group. Are you coming to BEA 2018? Are you also looking for a job or internship? If so, here are three reasons why you need to get your registration in early and upload your resume to our portal. One, stand out from the crowd by getting your resume in front of recruiters earlier. Two, allow recruiters to set up interviews with you before you arrive at BEA. Three, give yourself ample time to prepare for the job fair and BEA experience. So, are you ready to get started? Visit BEA.org to register today. It was my first year, and I was really excited. I've never heard anything about it before. Um, one thing that I did hear from previous students tell me about it was the career fair, and they were exactly right. When I got there, that career fair was just something that I've never ever seen before. It was huge. It had a very diverse background of, like, different companies, schools, like, you name it, they had it. And, you know, coming from a school that had a really rich um, career fair as well. We have two of them, you know, between our industry day for school and then, you know, another one at our College of Engineering. You know, I've seen companies that I never had the opportunity to like physically get in touch with. And that was something very exciting for me, like L'Oreal, Google, um, just a lot of companies that are really major that, you know, outside of going on the internet and applying for, you all had them there. I thought was really great. Um, one thing that I would say is for students coming for you have to be prepared when you go to these things. Um, most times, they in any other conference will give you some kind of background of what to expect or companies that were going to be there. I personally took that list, went through it very um, detailed, and kind of checked off who I wanted to speak to. You know, my motive. I already had like the jobs that I was interested in prior to going, and I just really made sure that I could sell myself when I got to the conference. It was good. Um, the next year, I was nominated for the Black of the Engineer Award, which I received the next year at um, BEA in community service. And that was just another highlight because coming back for the second time, it was a different perspective. I had my job, um, but it was more of like a family to me. I, I met so many people that run you all's organization for the conference. And it just is something that will always be in my heart in terms of just family. You know, I know I'm a professional now. I'm going to try to, you know, pay those fees to come back and bring my company there, Watson specifically. Um, but if there's anything, you know, I want students to know that, you know, I was in your shoes. There is a lot of competition, but you just have to be prepared. You can't be fearful. You have to be fearless and, you know, just be strong and confident because, you know, I think these are the kind of conferences that are here for us. And we don't take advantage enough of them. Um, you know, the parties are there. I did have fun in between, you know, handling my business. But that was the part example for me. And it's so funny, like, students from my 
school in other words they be like me we always see you talking to everybody like can you let somebody else have a chance and i'm like you want me to get your business too you know like this is this is serious work and when people know that you're hungry and that you're there to to get something out of it you know i think they, they even look at that even more as to why they want you so i would just encourage those to just keep moving forward and you know just go for it The U.S. Army Research, Development, and Engineering Command is operationalizing science and technology by developing innovative capabilities for soldiers that will provide overmatch against any potential adversary. By focusing on the Army's key priorities, readiness, modernization, and support to the joint warfighter, RDECOM is poised to solve the Army's toughest warfighting challenges. RDECOM is a team of nearly 14,000 people with more than 10,000 scientists or engineers, subject matter experts at the Army Research Laboratory and the Command 6 Research Development and Engineering Centers have an unparalleled understanding of the readiness needs for the future force. These subject matter experts work with academic and industry partners to provide soldiers with a decisive edge. The Army's R&D teams discover breakthrough technologies and design innovative systems that touch every area of the soldier's life, from the rucksacks and headgear that soldiers wear today to the integrated weapon systems the Army will use in the multi-domain battle space in the future. These future-focused technologies will sustain lethal forces without burdening soldiers. The command's global presence includes offices in 132 locations across 11 countries on five continents. RDECOM maintains strong relationships with allied science and technology organizations around the world, building partnerships, aligning with technology development as it happens, and securing the best technology for American soldiers, no matter where it is developed. The command's extensive network of U.S. and international academic, industry, and government partners includes more than 500 cooperative research and development agreements. RDECOM has a unique position within the Army to operationalize the global science and technology network and drive research and development in key areas such as armaments, tank and automotive, chemical biological, soldier systems, communications and electronics, and aviation and missile. This network influences the direction of technology and prepares America's warfighters to engage in complex global domains, including land, sea, space, cyberspace, and air. RDECOM is developing the next generation vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, or future vertical lift machines, that will fly farther and faster carrying heavier payloads and team with unmanned systems. RDECOM has made advancements in additive manufacturing, or 3D printing, by printing spare parts for robotic ground vehicles, hand grenades, and drones. RDECOM has developed the Joint Tactical Aerial Resupply Vehicle, a rectangular-shaped quadcopter, also known as a hover bike, that will enable infantry soldiers to order resupplies and receive them from an unmanned aerial vehicle within minutes. RDECOM is actively developing technologies with hundreds of partners around the world to improve Army readiness, modernize capabilities, and support the joint warfighter. These advanced systems will provide the foundational capabilities that protect the nation today, as well as shape the battlefield of the future. My name is Wart Tremaine Williams, they call me WT. I'm a project engineer uh, here on the LPD contract at Ingalls. I've been employed here at Ingalls 27 years. Born in Biloxi, grew up in Pascagoula. Came out here in 88 and I've uh, been here ever since. My mother, uh, uh, two years ago, she retired here from a 44 year career here at Ingalls. She, she started here the year I was born. She uh, raised four boys, I'm being the youngest. She was a very loyal employer. Didn't believe in missing time, and, and just to see that part of her and how she worked diligently here and, 
and still maintain home life was, was, uh, was pretty good inspiration to say, hey, that, that may be the place to go. A typical day for me is chaos, at random, uh, fulfilling and accomplished. I meet those challenges every morning. Uh, I repeat those challenges every day. But well, I said fulfilling because at the end of the day, at the close of shift, whenever that may be, but there are long hours in this profession, I, uh, I want to see that the support that is needed is given. I want to see that the dates that are, that are made are made. And uh, I want to see the product delivered. So I wake up every morning with a mindset to meet those challenges. I've learned to respect what everybody brings to the table, everybody's talent. Communication is key. And if we communicate and stick to the requirements that are set before us, the dates, the principles, the ethics, we can, uh, we can build some great ships here. I'm like that sponge, I'm soaking up every aspect of this, this, this life called shipbuilding. I look at it as I'm, I'm being productive, not just for my family, but for my country. I wanna give my son that's serving in the Navy a product that he can use and depend on because the people at Ingalls, along with my dad, put their pride and their, their love and dedication into it, and so I can trust it. I'm W.T. Williams, and I'm shaping freedom every day. What's your story, Ariel? How's things going this weekend? How did you end up here? What did you talk to us? Well, um, I first got an email from Job Match about um, opportunities with Boston Scientific and um, the conference, BEA. And um, through Job Match, um, I was able to contact Boston Scientific. And Boston Scientific loved me over the phone and they said, Job Match, we have to have her. So, um, Job Match made it possible for me to get here. And um, I had two interviews and I have two offers now. So is this your first time coming to a Bay Conference? This is my first time. Okay, excellent. And then as far as your education, where are you right now with it? Right now I am a junior biomedical engineering student. Um, I'm hoping that um, these opportunities that I have will um, help me land a job after senior year um, working in industry as a medical device company. Excellent. Well, we love to hear the success stories. We're so glad we were able to assist in this, but we want people to know about what we're doing here and how we can assist and just the, the, the great stories that people come away with. Congratulations to you. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Oh, you know what, let's ask her. What, what are you, you said you have two offers. Mm -hmm. And who are those with? It's the same company, but okay. two different locations. Excellent, that's so. Boston Scientific. Mm -hmm. Excellent, well we really appreciate it. Good luck to you and we know you don't need it. So. <laughs> Thank Boys you. I always tell my students there's a giant within you. Now let's start trying to figure out what it is. My name is Rod L. Carter. I am the recruitment manager for Career Communications Group, Inc. One of my main objectives when I'm on a campus is to inform the students that a conference is about to happen. And it's a very, very special experience. And the fact that that they're gonna experience something they'll never forget in their lives. Uh, individuals coming back from experiences, coming back to, to reunite, to share, to learn. And from that, I try to share with the students. There are some students I've actually met that say, I was there before, and they help tell the story to other students. You'll be around individuals that have a past in reference to, they've been there before. And they wanna share and give, they'll motivate you to take it to another level. They're gonna challenge you. Once you attend Bayer or the Women of Color STEM Conference, you will walk away a step closer to becoming that STEM professional that you aspire to be.